So this year I discovered my new all-time favorite author, so I thought it would just be fitting to talk about his books and why you should read them. Hi guys, my name is Spencer. Welcome to Sphinx Freeze. Today I'll be talking about why you should read Brian Selznick. So last year I read The Invention of Hugo Cabret, you can also see it right here, and it became one of my all-time favorite books. Obviously it became one of my favorite books that I read last year, so I wanted to check out more from this author, Brian Selznick. So this year I've read two of his other works. So these are actually his three main works he's read, or co-written other stuff. But these are his three main novels. This year I've read Wonderstruck as well as The Marvels. I love them both, and The Marvels currently is my favorite book of the year. When I was revisiting my Goodreads lately, I decided, man, this is my favorite author now. And I like tripled my favorite author's list on my Goodreads profile, because honestly, this is now a new autobi author. Like, I don't know if Brian Selznick is going to write more books that are kind of in the same format, but I hope he does because if he does, it's an autobi for me. I would just eat that stuff up. So Brian Selznick is an author illustrator. He illustrates a lot of different stuff. You'll probably notice his art everywhere. I think a popular example would be these versions of Harry Potter. And most of his books that he writes or co-writes, he also illustrates. He's really, really good. Like not just the cover art for these books, but also the art inside the books, which I'll talk more about later. So I'll first talk about some general reasons why you should read Brian Selznick, and then I'll go into each of these three books that I mentioned. The first reason would have to be with the writing. I think obviously for a lot of readers, that's like the number one thing that you kind of look out for. Like Brian Selznick's writing style is really straightforward. It's not too flowery, but it's also really beautiful. It kind of has a comforting and calming quality to it. You could tell that each word is really meaningful and I don't know, it's just like a really thought-provoking writing style. I would say he's almost like Neil Gaiman, if Neil Gaiman only wrote mostly dialogue. And there's a reason for that which I'll get to later, but generally take out like 70% of the prose that's not dialogue focused and then turn them into illustrations, that is Brian Selznick. The pacing of his stories is also just like very evenly paced. It's not super fast, but it's not slow either. It's just like very evenly paced. And again, I think that's largely due to the fact that a good chunk of his writing is illustrations. So I guess I should explain now why I keep mentioning illustrations because Brian Selznick's books are a literal work of art. The format of his books, at least these three, are a good mix of illustrations and prose. I would say it's at about a 50-50 ratio, although the way that the illustrations are used in his books are different for each book. I would describe it as kind of a cross between a graphic novel and a written novel. Sometimes Brian Selznick's books are often categorized as graphic novels because of the abundance of illustrations. Maybe it's just in my mind, but I think of graphic novels more leaning towards like the comic side of things. This isn't that at all. This doesn't look anything like comics. It's just like a good chunk of the book is illustrations. These are full page illustrations and they come consecutively, like each of the illustrations come consecutively. So it's not like an insert in between like chunks of prose. It's actually used as a storytelling tool. So you'll get a good chunk of prose and then a good chunk of illustrations and vice versa. So the way that you read it or like view it is almost like a silent animated movie. You keep flipping the pages. Each page kind of takes you to a new scene or a close-up or a zoom out of another scene. These illustrations are so well done. Let me show you a sample for this. I don't think this really spoils anything, but that's a good example of what the illustrations look like. And then finally, I want to talk about each of his books because a good part of the reason why I think everyone should read Brian Selznick is because each of his books kind of have a theme and purpose. So I'm going to talk about each of his books and talk about their genre, how the art is being used, the topic of the book, and the general theme as well as the purpose for which the book was written. So number one, The Invention of Hugo Cabret. This book, so let's just take a moment to like just appreciate the cover and how beautiful that is. This book is kind of a steampunk historical fiction. The way that the art is being utilized here is alternating chunks of prose and illustrations. So it'll be like 50 pages prose and then 50 pages illustrations and then repeating that all up to the end of the book. And the way that the illustrations kind of fade in and out is almost like watching a movie. Because kind of the topic of this story revolves around filmmaking. I'd say the general theme of this book is just like brokenness and how we're all a bit, little bit broken. And this book is a tribute to the filmmaker George Melier, I want to say. I don't know how to say his name, but Wondersman. This book, again, let's just appreciate the beauty that is the cover of this book. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? This also, The Naked Hardback, is also really pretty. 
the genre of this book is contemporary and the way that the art style is being used is we have two plot lines, one from the perspective of a boy and another from the perspective of a girl. 50 years earlier, the boy's story is told in prose and the girl's story is told in pictures. I actually have a dedicated review for this so go check that out. I have it linked in the cards as well as in the description. So the art here is alternating so it's similar to Hugo Cabret in that it's like a chunk of prose and then a chunk of illustrations and then that alternates. Although it can be a little bit off putting because when you get to the illustrations it's a different point of view and these points of view kind of merge at the end and you see how these two plot lines are connected. I am saying the general theme of this book is just kind of like finding a sense of belonging even when you're far away from home and the topic of this book revolves around museums and a huge part of why I love this book so much is because it is kind of a tribute to deaf culture and I loved learning more about it through this book. And finally, the Marvels. So again, let's just appreciate this beautiful cover right here. This is the naked hardback. It's not super fancy, but it's still beautiful. It has gold edges too. I don't know exactly what the genre of this book would be. I want to say it's contemporary, but it also at times feels like historical fiction. I guess it's kind of a mix. So the way that the art style is used here is the first, I think, 60% of the book is just all illustrations. And then the next like 35% is all prose and, and then the last 5% is illustrations again. I love this book so much. I'm not going to say how the illustrations are connected to the prose because that's kind of spoilery. I just love this book so much. It's my favorite book of this year and I don't think anything else I read for the rest of the year will top it. I think the general theme of this book is kind of say found family as well as just preserving memories especially of those who we have loved and who have passed on. I'm not going to be specific about it because it's a little bit spoilery, but it also revolves around queer relationships. The author himself is queer. I guess that's another reason if you want to read for more queer authors, then Brian Selznick is the author to check out. And I think that this book is kind of a tribute to theater. So there's that. So we have Hugo kind of being a tribute to filmmaking, especially to the filmmaker George Melier. When this struck as a tribute to deaf culture and then the Marvels as a tribute to theater. I don't want to talk too much about the plots of each book because I think that's just something that you have to discover on your own. It's just kind of a treasure trove of just beautiful illustrations and prose when you open the book. Just know that each of the stories are really touching and meaningful, not just because these are tributes to these different themes, but also because some of these stories are based on real people or based on real cultures. And Brian Selznick is very sensitive. You can tell that he did a lot of research for each of these books because at the very end there is an author's note in each of the book where he talks about his inspiration for writing each of his books and what he did to do his research. Everything is carefully planned out. Each of his books is just such a labor of love, not just in terms of research but also in terms of the illustration and the writing. I just love Brian Selznick so much and I hope he writes more books because like I said earlier, these are autobies for me. Anyway, I hope I've convinced you guys enough to read Brian Selznick and maybe you'll find him to be one of your new favorite authors as well. Let me know down in the comments if I've convinced you or if I have not. I hope you guys check his books out and if you do or if you have, let me know in the comments your thoughts on Brian Selznick's books. Feel free to reach out to me anytime to talk about his books because he is so good. Anyway, that is going to be it. I don't want to spend too much time on just a single author but thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please forget to subscribe so that you can do it later and have a good day.